Football is one of the few sports where overtime in the college level is drastically different than it is in the professional ranks. The NFL version tries to stay closer to normal gameplay, whereas college alters things a little bit more. Let's start with the pros. For a long time, there was no overtime, and games ended in ties a lot. From 1970 to 73, there were 29 ties in the NFL, but after a rule change added overtime starting in 1974, there have been just 25 tie games since. In 74, a single extra sudden death overtime period was added, but the league eventually felt the teams who would receive the kickoff to start overtime and simply kick a field goal to win were getting off too easily. So starting in 2011, they implemented some changes, which is pretty much where we are today. So regular season NFL games that are tied at the end of regulation now go to a single 10-minute overtime period. Each team gets two timeouts. There's a coin toss at the start, and the winning team can pick if they want to receive, kick off, or choose which way they want to go. Unlike at the start of the game, though, in overtime, the team that wins the coin toss will pretty much always choose to receive the kickoff. In overtime, both teams will have a chance to have possession of the ball unless the team who receives the opening kickoff scores a touchdown or time expires. So in other words, if the team that receives the opening kickoff scores a touchdown, that's it, they win. They don't even have to kick an extra point. If they kick a field goal, the other team gets a chance to have the ball. If the second team that gets the ball scores a touchdown, then that's it, they win. If they fail to score points either by turning the ball over or turning the ball over on downs, then the team that had the ball first wins. If the second team kicks a field goal and they tie the game, then the game keeps going and the next team that scores will win. If the team that receives the opening kickoff turns the ball over before scoring either on downs or with an interception or fumble, the other team will get the ball and the next team to score will win. The only way that a team could still win on a field goal without giving the other team possession is if they kick that field goal as time expires in overtime. And it may never happen again, but here's a good piece of trivia. If the team that kicks the opening kickoff scores a safety on their opponent's first drive, then they'll win instantly without ever having the ball. So time can expire and a regular season game can still end in a tie. But in the playoffs, it can't. So things are a little different for the postseason. Rather than a single 10-minute overtime quarter, overtime in the playoffs basically acts as if a second game is starting. So they'll still do another coin toss with the visiting team calling for it. Quarters are 15 minutes. Teams switch side after the first and third overtime periods. There's a two-minute warning in the second and the fourth, and each team gets three timeouts for every two periods. But the teams will almost never get beyond the first overtime period because the same rules with regards to scoring apply. Each team has to get the ball and complete a drive unless the first team scores a touchdown. There's a slight difference in that the second team to possess the ball either has to score or turn the ball over, including turning it over and down. So in other words, even if the first team kicks a field goal and time expires on the first overtime period while the second team is mid-drive, then the game will go to a second overtime period to let that team finish their drive, unlike in the regular season where the game would just be over. If somehow nobody manages to score through four overtime quarters, then they'll have another coin toss to start the fifth overtime period. This has never happened, though. There have only been six games that have made it to double overtime, with the longest lasting seven minutes and 40 seconds into that second OT period. The Miami Dolphins won that game in 1971, with Garrow Yuprimian ultimately kicking the winning field goal. Garrow was actually from Cyprus, and he had a difficult time understanding football. In his first NFL game, his coach told him before the game that they had lost the coin toss, at which point he ran onto the field to look for the coin. Eventually, he figured things out, though, and he went on to kick for the perfect 1972 Dolphins team. Anyway, that's the NFL. College overtime is a little more like a shootout or extra innings, and the games will never end in a tie. College overtime also starts with a coin toss and the visitors getting to choose. Do they want to start on offense, start on defense, or which direction to go? There are no more kickoffs. There's no more game clock. Overtime consists of a round where each team gets possession of the ball at the 25, and each team goes until they score or fail to get a first down, whether it's due to a turnover, they're stopped on fourth down, or they miss a field goal. No matter what the first team does, the second team always gets a chance to match them. So if the first team scored a touchdown, then the other team has to score a touchdown too. Anything short of that, and the first team wins. If they do score a touchdown, the game will be tied, and they'll go to a second overtime round. If the first team kicks a field goal, then the second team can win with a touchdown, lose with a turnover, or tie the game with a field goal of their own, in which case there will be another round. If the first team fails to score, then the other team just has to score to win. If they can't score, they'll go to another round. 
So remember how all this starts with a coin toss. Unlike in the NFL, the team that wins will usually choose to get the ball second so that they know what they have to do to at least match the other team. The team that loses the coin toss gets to choose whether they want to go first or second on offense in the even numbered rounds, should it come to that. So why is the ball on the 25 yard line? If you look at it, it's actually a pretty good balance considering what's happening here. It's close enough that they could score on one play, but it also means that they'll probably have to drive a little bit. If they fail to gain any yardage, they could probably kick a field goal from that spot. I couldn't really find any stats for college, but in the NFL, there's about a 71% chance they hit a 41-yard field goal. But I would imagine in college, the figure is a little lower. So it's doable, but it's certainly not a guarantee. If you lose any more than 5 or 10 yards from that original line of scrimmage, you're going to have a really tough chance of kicking a field goal. So it's close enough to make things interesting, but also far enough away that you can't lose too much yardage. If the game reaches a third overtime period, then teams have to attempt a two-point conversion if they score a touchdown rather than kicking an extra point. And if the two teams reach a fifth round of overtime and the game is still tied, then the ball is moved up to the three-yard line and teams will just alternate single plays trying to score a two-point conversion.